Section 8 of Vegetarianism and Occultism. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Andrea Fiore. Vegetarianism and Occultism by C. W. Leadbeater. Section 8. The Sin on Slaughter. Hitherto we have been speaking of what we have called the physical and selfish considerations, which should make a man give up the eating of this dead flesh, and turn him, even though only for his own sake, to a purer diet. Let us now think for a few moments of the moral and unselfish considerations connected with his duty towards others. The first of these, and this does seem to me a most terrible thing, is the awful sin of unnecessarily murdering these animals. Those who live in Chicago know well how this ghastly ceaseless slaughter goes on in their midst, how they feed the greater part of the world by wholesale butchery, and how the money made in this abominable business is stained with blood, every coin of it. I have shown clearly, upon irreproachable testimony, that all this is unnecessary, and if it is unnecessary, it is a crime. The destruction of life is always a crime. There may be certain cases in which it is the lesser of two evils, but here it is needless and without a shadow of justification, for it happens only because of the selfish, unscrupulous greed of those who coin money out of the agonies of the animal kingdom, in order to pander to the perverted tastes of those who are sufficiently depraved to desire such loathsome ailment. Remember, it is not only those who do the obscene work, but those who, by feeding up on this dead flesh, encourage them and make their crime remunerative, who are guilty before God of this awful thing. Every person who partakes of this unclean food has his share in the indescribable guilt and suffering by which it has been obtained. It is universally recognized in law that que facet per alium facet per se, whatsoever a man does through another, he does himself. A man will often say, but it would make no difference to all this horror if I alone cease to eat meat. That is untrue and disingenuous. First, it would make a difference, for although you may consume only a pound or two each day, that would in time amount to the weight of an animal. Secondly, it is not a question of amount, but of complicity in a crime, and if you partake of the results of a crime, you are helping to make it remunerative, and so you share in the guilt. No honest man can fail to see that this is so. But when men's lower lusts are concerned, they are usually dishonest in their view, and decline to face the plain facts. There surely can be no difference of opinion as to the proposition that all this horrible, unnecessary slaughter is indeed a terrible crime. Another point to be remembered is that there is dreadful cruelty connected with the transport of these miserable animals, both by land and sea, and there is often dreadful cruelty in the slaughtering itself. Those who seek to justify these loathsome crimes will tell you that an endeavor is made to murder the animals as rapidly and painlessly as possible, but you have only to read the reports to see that in many cases these intentions are not carried out an appalling suffering ensues. End of section 8 Recording by Andrea Fiore